Do you want some fast and easy rewards this season? Well, today you're in luck. We will be ranking the difficulty for every spec in Solo Shuffle for Season 3. Just like last time, we have to think about the skill floors, which is the amount of time or effort needed to master a spec and climb rating. Having a low skill floor means a spec is generally easy and good for beginners. In Solo Shuffle, there is an additional barrier for climbing. It's your teammates. And some specs can get griefed way more than others. So on top of thinking about rotations, passive defense, and win conditions, we need to think about how flexible a spec is in random lobbies and how difficult it is to grief. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcap is backed by a rating game guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First up, we have our suggestion of the easiest melee in the game for grinding that sweet solo shuffle rating. As you might have expected, Demon Hunter takes this title. After getting a major rework in the 10.2 patch, the spec is definitely looking strong. In the past, Demon Hunter was considered a noob-friendly melee, but its rotation has gotten noticeably more complex over the years. With that said, DH damage seems significantly overbuffed and right now can win games with damage alone, which is why we're keeping it in very easy. Demon Hunters also have some passive defense into magic damage, which these days is incredibly strong since most specs, even melee, deal spell damage. While Demon Hunters can still die in stuns, so can 80% of the specs in WoW, so we really don't see that as a defensive flaw unique to DH. With our easiest melee sorted, let's move on to some other options that are great for an easy grind. Here we have both Arms and Fury Warrior. Now, of course, we can hear in the comments that Warriors get owned by bad lobbies, but that's true for virtually every other melee in the game. What makes Warriors good for beginners is all due to damage profiles, where both specs have pretty simple rotations, especially Fury Warrior, and are less reliant on precise CC or complicated win conditions in order to close out games. Fury is also quite durable and is lucky enough to have a defensive that is usable while stunned. Both specs are also good utility bots for their lobby, especially now with the introduction of Safeguard, which adds another charge of intervene and damage reduction against all sources, making it more fail-proof than ever. Warriors are also very flexible and can mesh well with a wide range of specs, so if you want a classic lumberjack experience, then look no further than Arms or Fury for chopping down your opponents to climb the ladder this season. Next up is Rhett Paladin. Now, although they might not be the strongest melee relative to some other high tiers this season, and they're especially overshadowed by Demon Hunters at the moment, Rhett is still a good choice for anyone looking for more of a one-dimensional and reactive playstyle. Rhett comes equipped with one of the most high-impact offensive cooldowns in the game, with Avenging Wrath offering enormous kill power, especially in deep dampening, which can be amplified by seamless instant CC to close out games. When combined with its expansive defensive toolkit, the spec is extremely durable against different sources of damage and can easily offer assistance to teammates with a wide array of utility options. While this might seem difficult to juggle, the sheer amount of defensive utility Rhett has means it's more fail-proof compared to other specs who might have only one or two external CDs at most. Just know that after its rework earlier this expansion, which saw Rhett become the go-to spec for any player looking to climb, its strength in the current meta is a little lackluster. Now that we've covered the easiest melee, let's move on to the moderate difficulty category. First up are both DK specs. Now we know what you're thinking, Frost is way easier than Unholy. After all, it only has two damage buttons, right? Well, rotationally, yes, Frost is a more watered down spec, but its difficulty comes from its win condition, where it revolves around setting up kills with its blender combo of grips and micro CC. But once the setup is over, the Frost DK needs to do a lot of kiting in between, since it lacks some of the defensives of Unholy. This can make Frost really awkward to play in some lobbies, and really requires teammates not to grief before or during these one minute setups. Unholy is a bit more flexible with its win conditions, especially now that its 45 second CDs have been buffed. While it is the harder spec to play mechanically, it does have an easier time synergizing with the rest of the lobby, which is why we're categorizing both specs as moderately difficult. Next up is Enhancement Shaman. Just like cats are not dogs, Enhancement is not elemental, and there are a few key differences that make Enhance a bit more complicated. The main reason being is that it spends most games running into the enemy team, which is not ideal since it has limited mobility and defensive options outside of Astral Shift, needing to drop the Bloodlust PvP talent in order to pick up Burrow. While Shamans might boast a lot of utility, Enhancement is more or less a damage bot in Solo Shuffle, not looking to set up kills with clutch hexes, but instead simply blasting its way through enemy CDs. In a similar spot is Windwalker Monk, who just like Demon Hunter, can blast on damage. 
After getting a minor rework last season, Windwalker damage is some of the best out of any melee in the bracket, all while having some of the most efficient defensives in the game. But as a leather-wearing melee, Windwalker is prone to getting bullied by some other high tiers, which means relying more on kiting and being evasive to avoid death. Windwalker is also fairly reliant on its leg sweep to set up kills, which can easily be griefed by other players who don't respect stun DRs. Speaking of stun DRs, Outlaw is the first rogue spec to make an appearance on our list. Just like Demon Hunter, Rogue got a massive rework in the patch, including several quality of life improvements. Last season, Outlaw was known for being a caster bully. With the best mobility out of any Rogue spec and a steady stream of single target damage, Rogues could stick on Wizards without any issue. The main downside was that their finishing power did feel a bit limited compared to Sub, who as we know is a powerhouse of burst damage. This season, however, Outlaw Burst is looking quite strong thanks to the newly added Crackshot talent, which gives Outlaw massive burst out of stealth and during Shadow Dance, which should give it more impact over the game. And thanks to a few passives on the tree, Outlaw is arguably the most durable of all three rogue specs, so with high mobility, great burst and control, and added passive defense, Outlaw Rogue is a perfect representation of a moderately difficult melee. Moving on, let's heat things up with some more challenging melee DPS. First up is Survival Hunter, which is widely considered to be the most difficult Hunter spec. While Hunter is typically seen as a good beginner class for PvP, Survival has the added difficulty curve of a less streamlined rotation combined with the necessity to weave in and out of melee range, leaving it exposed to damage that BM and Marks could otherwise avoid. This will be even more of a problem this season, as Survival Tactics was dramatically nerfed and no longer removes dots with feigned death, making Hunters more vulnerable overall to many casters. Assassination, on the other hand, requires a different explanation. While it might be true that Assassination is the most streamlined rogue spec rotationally, Asa suffers from one huge problem. It is one of the easiest specs to grief in solo shuffle. With a win condition that depends on stacking dots and landing kidney shot on DR, Asa is prone to getting its kill setups ruined with abilities like Blinding Light or even innocuous stuns like War Stomp, which if used at the wrong times can set Assassination behind massively. Assassination also requires a lot of uptime to make its damage count, which isn't exactly ideal as the squishiest rogue spec. So while Asa might technically be easy to play, it's not exactly the easiest to win in the solo bracket. Finally, let's wrap things up with the hardest melee for solo shuffle in Season 3. And before we move into our next melee, we just want to remind you that a spec being strong doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. Even though Sub might be considered one of the best melee in the bracket, it has a very acute learning curve, and unlike other melee who can simply slam a constant stream of DPS, Sub Rogues need to play incredibly crafty, carefully managing DRs and executing kills with precise CC. Subtlety is a spec that scales incredibly well with game knowledge and experience, causing it to have a super high skill floor. But as an entry level spec, sub can be very unforgiving. Just like assassination, sub can get easily griefed by players messing up stun DRs or breaking CC. The saving grace for sub is that it's quite possibly the tankiest it's ever been with two charges of vanish, which grants an absorb shield, and some new self healing and shielding options with the newly added exhilarating execution talent. But despite its defensive strength and offensive power, Sub still isn't something we would recommend for true beginners. But at this point, we have one more melee left. If you've been keeping score, it's Feral Druid. Now, there are a few different reasons why Feral makes our list as the hardest melee, and to put it simply, it's just a more complex version of Assassination Rogue. One reason for this is the wild attunement PvP talent, which encourages a playstyle spamming Cyclone, making Feral one of the only melee in the game that needs to routinely worry about interrupts. Casting these Cyclones leaves Ferals exposed in human form, where they are very squishy, and overall, Feral Druids need to actively play around enemy stuns, pre-shifting into bear form or playing evasive to avoid damage. Do Feral Druids pump damage? Of course, but their damage comes from so many sources and there is definitely a lot to micromanage while doing so. This is why we typically wouldn't recommend Feral for a true beginner. In the right hands, the spec can be amazing, but without experience, it's like playing with 1 out of 9 potential lives. With melee DPS covered, let's move on to ranged, starting with the easiest specs in the bracket. In what shouldn't be a surprise, BM Hunter takes our first spot. We know this has been a bit of a meme for a while, but BM Hunter is easily the most accessible ranged DPS. Is it squishy to melee? It can be, but so is almost every other ranged DPS in the game, all while not having to worry about interrupts. Unless, of course, you have to res your pet, which we guess could be challenging. Anyway, BM and Mark's Hunters eat cloth and leather wearers for breakfast, all while having a pretty streamlined win condition, do damage and land traps, which these days is easier than ever thanks to Intimidation being baseline and Diamond Ice being more viable after the CC duration nerfs. 
Speaking of nerfs, Augmentation has seen a few of them, but are still one of the easiest casters in the game for a few reasons. The main reason is that Augmentation's core ability gives more power to their partners, not only increasing damage, but also healing, which means as long as you manage Essence and Empowered spells for Ebon Might, you are doing 90% of the work for your damage rotation. And when it comes to hard casting these spells, Evokers are blessed with not one, not two, but over three different spell schools, making it painless to manage interrupts. Does Augmentation have a lot of utility? Yes, but the bulk of its success is centered around doing the biggest burst and buffing teammates to land seemingly random kills, even outside of CC windows. With our easiest range DPS covered, let's move on to three more picks, which are all great options for beginners. First up, Elemental Shaman, which is apparently so easy, it doesn't even require human hands to play. Jokes aside, if we learned one thing from last season, it's that Ellie Shamans can do a lot of damage without needing to actually cast. In fact, they play the entire game while falling asleep on the space bar. Now, of course, Ellie can get bullied by melee, which requires some kiting, but doesn't cause much of a DPS loss, a perk which almost no other caster could claim. The main difficulty of Shaman in Solo Shuffle is making precise use out of every utility option looking for moments to tremor while being highly disruptive with kicks and micro CC. So even though it might still be the preferred spec of spacebar spamming enthusiasts, Ellie does have a bit of nuance compared to some other ranged DPS. On a similar note, Mark's Hunter has more nuance than Beast Mastery, which is why it's a tier lower on our list. Unlike BM, who wins the game by pure attrition, Marks needs to capitalize more off specific cooldown windows. Even though the spec can do some impressive burst, Marks Hunters need to care more about getting countered by mechanics like disarms, or even the simple element of line of sight. Additionally, Marks Hunters can often struggle a bit more while getting trained. Unlike BM, who can do most of their damage while under pressure, Marks Hunters can actually get shut down. So, for a few different reasons, Marks falls in the middle of BM and survival on the difficulty scale. Next up is Balance, and following a similar theme, Boomkins are one of the few ranged DPS specs who are blessed by powerful instant cast damage. In most games, Moonfire, Sunfire, and Star Surge will be their main damage sources, all of which requiring no hard casting. Even getting into Eclipse is simple too, with Warrior of Elune and Owlkin Adept offering instant star fires to benefit from those sweet Eclipse bonuses. Now of course, Boonkins have to do a bit of hard casting with Cyclone, which these days is a bit more challenging after repeated nerfs to Owlkin Frenzy, but their win condition is still built around Root Beam and Incarn, which are two spells that instantly provide impact and can easily snowball pressure, especially in the late game. And sticking on topic, Destro Warlock rounds out our easy range DPS thanks to its abundance of instant cast options. If you are a returning player, you might think that Destro would get easily bullied with interrupts, but these days that's quite far from the truth. Destro has some of the best instant cast damage in the game through Shadowburn, Conflag, and Portals, which this season will be even stronger thanks to the 2 and 4 set bonuses. When hard casting is needed, Destro is one of the best DPS for managing interrupts, where it can bounce between multiple spell schools fearing when locked on fire, immolating when locked on shadow, or casting chaos bolt if locked on either. Altogether, Destro is considered by many players to be the easiest warlock spec and is a great choice for anyone wanting a classic wizard experience. With our easiest range DPS out of the way, let's move on to some specs which are in the middle of the pack. First up is Frost Mage, which spoiler will wind up being the easiest mage spec on our list. Frost is a comfort pick for many old guard mage players, having a significant amount of instant cast damage tied into Ice Lance, Frozen Orb, and Flurry. This helps free the mage up to land Polymorphs more easily, and potentially bait kicks to land a huge ray of Frost. Defensively, Frost Mage is the most forgiving mage spec, with two charges of Ice Block, a stronger barrier, and even some more reliable root and snare effects to help avoid enemy melee. This doesn't make Frost Mage a breeze to play, but makes it less prone to getting bullied by hunters and helps it retain a familiar mage playstyle, which will make a lot more sense when we cover Fire and Arcane. But before we do that, let's finish up our moderately difficult ranged with Affliction and Demo Warlock. Now, we know that Affliction does have to hard cast a significant portion of its damage, but now with the new Jinx PvP talent, Affliction has a ton of free globals since this ability automatically applies Agony and Corruption anytime a curse is used. Warlock mobility is also much better than people make it out to be, with Soul Burn, Port, and the Impish Instincts PvP talent, which was buffed late last season. While Warlocks can still get bullied by melee, they have significantly less mobility problems, 
And with Season 2 buffs to Unstable Affliction, Backlash Damage, Warlocks are less prone to spam dispels from enemy healers. Moving on to Demo, this was another spec with a minor rework in the 10.2 patch, which shifted a lot of damage away from Long Tyrant windows, and with a redesign to the Grand Warlock Capstone talent, Tyrant now has a baseline 1 minute cooldown. This should make the spec way less punishing to play, since Tyrant was a massive target for weak auras enthusiasts. And let's not forget that Demo is still the quintessential zoo spec, having a lot of passive damage from pets, which will now include flying bats who randomly proc from warlock spells and can even damage players running out of line of sight. Demo is also the tankiest warlock spec on paper thanks to Soul Link, but against some classes who do funnel damage, like elemental shamans for instance, having a pet out means an additional target to cleave, which can wind up being a bit of a burden. Overall though, both Affliction and Demo are in the middle of the pack in terms of difficulty, but tend to mesh well with a wide range of specs. Next up, let's start cranking the difficulty knobs by looking at some of the more challenging range DPS to play in Solo Shuffle. First up is Devastation Evoker. This might come as a surprise since rotationally, Devastation is pretty straightforward, and as we know, has always had that one-shot potential. But in 10.2, their mastery was nerfed, reducing their burst inside of PvP, and instead shifting their damage profile towards sustained output. This change might seem good on paper, but Devastation's gimmick has always been those big one-shots, and landing kills might feel harder after this change. The main difficulty of Devastation is that it's definitely a squishy spec. Ask any healer and they will tell you that healing a Devastation Evoker can feel like an absolute nightmare, as their limited range means constantly pushing in without major defensives to fall back on. This is why Augmentation is seen as the superior spec, since it can easily do the same damage as Dev while being a meat shield for its entire team. So as the gimped version of its sister spec, Devastation is just not that easy to play in Solo Shuffle. Speaking of which, Shadow Priest is next up on our list for hard range DPS, but what makes Shadow Priest so hard? For one, it is definitely prone to getting bullied by melee, needing to hard cast a majority of its damage without having the greatest mobility or instant escape options. Shadow Priest is also a pseudo sub rogue, as one of the few casters to have multiple instant CC options that are paramount to scoring kills. This means that Shadow Priests not only need to juggle interrupts and utility, but need to actively set up kills around stun silence windows, which is a lot to micromanage in a super chaotic environment. Shadow Priest is not the hardest caster in Solo Shuffle, and instead that title is split between two specs. Both Fire and Arcane Mage share the crown as some of the most challenging specs to play for similar reasons. First of all, Fire is uniquely challenging because of Glass Cannon, which increases damage at the cost of losing 20% HP. With Hunters and Elemental Shamans looking just as strong this season, playing with 80% of your health requires a lot of finesse. Fire Mages need to play very evasive, which is a playstyle completely opposite from most DPS, constantly blinking backwards with the goal of never being hit. The spec needs to play very hit and run, capitalizing off of combustion windows and kiting in between. At lower ratings, this playstyle can be a bit awkward since you are then extremely reliant on your teammate to support your kiting adventure. Arcane Mage plays a very similar game, running around the map like a Ferrari with the goal of never being hit. The unique challenge is that Arcane shares the same spell school with damage and polymorph, which makes interrupts extremely punishing. Arcane is also incredibly squishy as it lacks the double block from Frost and Cauterize from Fire. Again though, the true difficulty for both of these specs is the need to just play backwards, looking to exploit spacing to avoid getting hit. This might be easy for some players, but can be a challenging adjustment for others. With all of our DPS sorted, let's wrap things up with healers, starting with our easiest picks. Taking this first slot is Resto Druid, which has quickly become one of the most dominant healers in the bracket. Not only does a significant amount of healing come from one button, Life Bloom, Resto now has multiple NPCs to summon that can do the healing for them. Together, these allow Resto Druids to play passively in Solo Shuffle, max ranging at a pillar to avoid CC. Despite a few nerfs to Treants in 10.2, Resto will likely experiment more with Tree of Life, which is a cooldown that comes in clutch during deep dampening. If you can manage to press Tree Form early, it can come back up again in the late game and easily carry healing, while other healers are left tapped. Speaking of another passive healer, Holy Priest is taking our second slot as a very easy healer. Just like Resto Druid, Holy Priest has an advantage in the passive healing wars, where its top heal in most games is actually from its mastery. Despite some reworks in the patch, we expect Echo of Light to continue being a major source of healing for Priests this season, and with buffs to Serenity healing, Holy will be in a much better position to spot heal. Holy Priest is also loaded with a few different cooldowns that help it dictate the pace of the game, with Spirit of the Redeemer offering CC immunity and zero mana cost healing while in Angel form. 
Holy can also dish out some impressive damage with minimal risk thanks to Imperial Blaze, which makes it one of the lucky healers that can actually impact the game offensively. Overall, Holy Priest is probably one of the best healers for beginners right now, as its rotation continues to be incredibly streamlined with tons of cooldowns to fall back on. Now let's move on to some other easy healers, starting with a controversial pick. Fistweaver has been a contentious topic within the community, since it feels so out of place compared to other healers. I mean, come on, does it not seem weird that a healer can do crazy damage while pumping out HPS? Anyway, the spec is built around Ancient Teachings, which actually got a buff in 10.2, and now heals allies within 40 yards of the Monk up from 30. While this talent might make Fistweaver seem insanely easy to play, it does mean that the player has to deal with the same issues as a melee DPS. So although the healing part of Fistweaving might be easy, it does require players to not mess up on mobility, which can be more difficult in some lobbies. Overall though, Fistweaver is looking to be a good choice for healers looking to climb, since its damage output gives you enormous impact over the game. Speaking of damage, Disc Priest can do a lot of damage too, and in the past, Atonement was the backbone of their healing output, which added a layer of complexity of the spec. Combine this with the fact that Disc Priest healing output was low in Season 2, and the spec was previously a massive challenge. Thankfully, 10.2 addressed a few of these issues, buffing Penance, Flash Heal, and Power Word Shield in order to make Disc Priest feel more like an actual healer. These changes were part of a major rework to Disc, aimed at making the spec both stronger and simpler converting previous active talents into passive procs, and streamlining the spec to be more accessible for most players. With changes to Schism, Shadow Covenant, and Harsh Discipline, Priests should have a much easier time min-maxing their healing output. 10.2 also introduced a new flashy cooldown called Ultimate Penitence, which not only does damage and healing, but also provides CC immunity to the Priest while active. Overall, not only is Disc looking much stronger this season, but it is finally looking much easier to play after a few months of having an incredibly bloated rotation. Moving on, let's dive into some moderately difficult healers for Season 3. First up is Holy Paladin. Now, in the past, we've generally categorized Holy Paladin as easy, but 10.2 included a long list of changes that will make Holy Paladin noticeably more difficult this season. Some key changes include nerfs to both Blessing of Sacrifice and Sanctified Plates, which means weaker defensive options for their team while also being more squishy. The 10.2 rework seems to also have taken a small hit at Paladin's mana bars, which might make the spec more challenging in the late game, where it can be outclassed by some of our other top tier healers. Anyway, due to a few nerfs, Holy Paladins are looking to be more difficult this season, but are still a solid choice for beginner healers. Wrapping up our moderate category is Casted Mistweaver. Monks have gone through a turbulent expansion so far, going back and forth between two dramatically different playstyles, eventually leaving the traditional healing variation in the dirt during Season 2. In the past, Mistweaver was very susceptible to random swaps, but now is in a much better position, especially after a rework to Healing Elixir, which is now an auto-proc defensive, adding a layer of protection to the threat of dying in stuns. The true difficulty of Monk is still tied to the fact that it has to hard cast quite a bit and push in deep in order to CC. This can put monks in very vulnerable positions with limited options available when locked out on healing. But now let's wrap things up with our most challenging healers in Season 3. First up is Restoration Shaman, whose primary challenge is getting griefed by teammates. This is because of Shaman cooldowns, with both Earthen Wall and Spirit Link having unique positional requirements. Earthen in particular is prone to getting griefed constantly, as its subtle animation can be hard to spot for DPS, and there's a very high chance that it gets little to no value when pressed. Shaman healing has also been quite lackluster this expansion, and although it received a few buffs in 10.2, we expect Resto Shamans to struggle in the mid to late game, where their healing output is extremely limited. And finally, rounding out our list is Preservation Evoker, who just like Resto Shaman can be easily griefed by teammates. As you should know by now, Preservation has limited range on spells, and has a few mechanics that require it to skill shot heals in a frontal cone. This presents a challenge in solo shuffle, where many DPS don't respect their healer's positioning, and often push into very vulnerable positions, leaving the Evoker extremely exposed. And in order to truly play at a competitive level, Evokers need to do a lot, weaving in damage, CC, and interrupts into their healing rotation. As a Swiss Army knife of mechanics, we wouldn't really suggest preservation for beginner healers in the solo bracket. That brings us to final difficulty rankings of every spec in WoW PvP. This list was made in collaboration with a dozen rank 1 and tournament level players, and we've done our best to tweak it to be representative at all skill levels. Remember that we're talking about skill floors, which is the minimum amount of effort needed to perform well in Arena. Generally speaking, the difficulty of DPS is tied to win conditions and how much multitasking needs to be done to actually score a kill. For healers, difficulty is tied to things like maintenance and recovery options, but overall, the main difficulty in solo shuffle for every role is the ability to get griefed. 
Having a low skill floor is different than having a high skill ceiling, which is the true beauty of PvP since there is always the potential to improve. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about skill capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one, but before we go, we want your input. What spec do you think is easiest to play in Solo Shuffle? Let us know in the comments below. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.